and welcome to my Skillshare course. I'm Callie and in this course we're going to be covering a whole page with some nice illustrative drawing before adding some watercolours. We want to have lots of pattern and shape and lots of colour and not much white paper showing through at all. The reason I've chosen this particular style today is I find it very therapeutic. Once you've done all your drawing and you've got some nice crisp black lines to work between with your paint, you'll find it very, very relaxing just adding those colours. And this is something you might want to do over several days, leave it to one side and come back to it. So that's another good thing about it is it is something you can come back to and do over a, a little while if you've not got time to do it all in one day. I've chosen to use autumn things and things that you may collect on a woodland walk maybe, but of course we could use different things, uh, different subjects, different seasons of the year. As ever, if you've got any questions as you go along, please do feel free to ask me. You can ask me here on Skillshare or you can get in touch with me via Instagram, on Instagram Messenger and all my contact details are on my website as well. As this is something that's going to take quite a while, I'm going to have a little bit more chat with you than I perhaps normally do. And I'll talk about the paints that I use and one thing and another and a few tips as we go along. So I'll get right on now and in the first section I'll tell you a little bit about what materials you're going to need as well but I will put those down in the reference section and I'll also put in the reference section the beautiful photographs that I'm going to be working from but of course you can choose um, some different ones or some objects that you have round and about. Okay so I'll come back to you at the end and we'll have another chat about how it's gone and I look forward to seeing your work as well um, but as like I say any questions please don't hesitate to ask and I hope you enjoy the course. Once you're sitting comfortably and you've got everything you need, including your reference material, you can start with your pencil guidelines. I really do recommend that you use pencil to begin with on something as complex as this. I do often just work with my ink pen without any guidelines, but when it's something like this, where it's, like I said, very, very complicated and a lot of drawing involved, I think it's perhaps best to start with a pencil, especially if you're not too confident in your drawing. You'll see I began with a conker around about a third of the way across and a third of the way up the paper and made that quite big um, and dominant just to give a little bit of composition and focal point to the whole thing. You don't have to, you could just make the whole thing very busy as if you were doing a fabric print or wallpaper or something like that. Um, you might want to fill the paper more than I did. I left quite a bit of space between the objects. You might want to make it even more packed and spend more time doing your drawing. So this is going to be the longest part of the project where you're really concentrating on those shapes and getting your drawings into the spaces that you want them to be and, or, and including all the different objects that you want to include. Try and bring some objects back into the pa painting. What I mean by that is with your, when you have some branches or some twigs or berries, whatever, with a bend or an arch on them or some leaves, the spines of the leaves where they bend, Try and bring them from the outside edges of the paper inwards to bring the eye back into the middle of the painting. So take your time with this. Um, try and get some variety, some variety of shapes, sizes. Um, you know, you've got a prickly conquer and then you've got something very smooth with the conquer itself. We've got the berries, which are very, um, I don't know what the word is, but you know, all those little texture with the little berries there and then some smooth leaves. So all, change things around and make sure you've got a lot of variety. Variety is the word I'm looking for there. OK, so really take your time with this and concentrate on it and fill that page up nicely. And you'll see um, where I do leave the space, I put some extra lines in, which are just very abstract, imaginary lines, splitting the paper up. Um, between the objects which means that we've got some negative spaces and some enclosed spaces to put some colours in later on with the paint. So when you come to do the painting it's actually going to be very relaxing because you're going to have those very solid lines there to work into. So this is the moment when you want to be nice and wide awake when you're doing this drawing really concentrating because this is a difficult part of the project and once you've done this you can really relax put some music on um, you know and you really enjoy I think it's quite a good therapy the painting part of the process because I wanted this to be quite illustrative and I wanted the lines to really show and to show through the paint if we did happen to go over them I've chosen quite a chunky pen 
probably one that's a little bit thicker than you normally used to see me work with so this one is a size 1.5 it's an artist pit pen pit spelt p-i-t-t -T, and it's a black one so you can see the lines show up really well so you need to be careful obviously because you can't erase your pen i mean there are ways of getting rid of pen if you do make a, a big mistake you go go over it with a white pen or something like that there are there are ways that we could do that but just be careful, especially if you've drawn things overlapping. I think I drew one of the acorns over the top of one of the leaves. So you've just got to be careful there where you're drawing your line around your leaf that you don't just, you know, get onto autopilot. Because when you're relaxed and you're drawing um, and you've got those guidelines there already with the pencil, you can sort of be too relaxed and find you make mistakes. So just concentrate whilst you're doing this. I know I said that in the last thing when we were doing the pencil but once this drawing is done then the paint is the easy bit so and I probably put more detail in with the pen than I did with the pencil so although I've got those strong pencil guidelines there I've put some extra veins in the leaves and like I said earlier some extra lines across some quite abstract lines just splitting that space up giving us room to put lots of different colors in I've also added some texture into the acorns there on the little caps, the shells that um, that cover them and things like that. So keep your reference photographs handy. Um, and I've gone a little bit thicker and darker in places where there is absolutely no light. So for instance, in that little shell of the acorn there. Um, and I think that's it really for the pen drawing. You'll notice that I stop at the start at the top of the page um, and work across and down. This is so that my hand isn't resting on the ink, especially when it's still wet. Um, so I'm not smudging anything. So although this is a waterproof pen and it's a light fast print pen, it does need to dry, you know, and even though it only takes a few short minutes to dry, just be aware of that, that it is a little bit wet to begin with and you don't want to be smudging your hand across it. So a good way to work is from, obviously depending if you're left or right handed, from the top corner across and down. Also, when you've finished your ink drawing and you're completely happy with it, then you're going to need to erase those pencil guidelines because one or two of those lines you will have changed. You will have decided you wanted to alter things a little bit because we do that as we're drawing. We're making decisions all the time as to composition and detail, etc. So again, leave it to dry. Go and have a brew. Although it only takes a few minutes, give it those moments to dry. Um, and then come back with a nice eraser, something soft, an eraser that you've cleaned off on a piece of rough paper, um, making sure it doesn't have anything left on it from the previous time it was used. And don't go buying a cheap eraser that's going to spoil your paper. Um, have a nice good eraser and carefully get rid of those pencil guidelines so that we can go on and put the paint onto it once um, you finish the whole thing. Okay, so I'll come back to you very shortly with the next step, which is the paints. So for that, you're gonna to need to go and get your watercolor paints out. At this stage, before you start adding your paint, you might actually want to take a photograph of your ink drawing. It's nice to keep on the computer in black and white and you can use it in the future, perhaps print it off and colour it in with crayons or something like that. Um, you can use it in all different ways. If you've got the original copy in black and white, you can use different colours in the future. You can even fill it in on the computer if you're good at doing things digitally. So I have taken a photograph of my black and white image and I'll share that with you in the reference section. So if you wanted to print mine off and have a go at colouring it in, if you wanted to do it in watercolour, you could trace it onto some watercolour paper and you can do that with your own as well and do it in lots of different colour ways. However you want to use it, it's handy to have that image. And you could just use your phone, which is pretty good at uh, taking them nowadays and you can get lots of apps that will remove backgrounds and make it crisper for you. So to begin with I'll tell you what materials you're going to need here. You're going to need your watercolour paints of course and a nice watercolour brush. 
The brush I'm using is a sable brush and it's a size six, which is quite a handy size to get into all these little nooks and crannies of the drawing that we've got here. Um, so you really want a brush that's got a nice point and a tip to it to get into there. So a good quality brush. You don't need to have a sable one like I do. There can be some really nice quality um, synthetic brushes and always look, look out for them in the sales. Quite often you can get some good brushes in sales. So move your colours around the painting. Um, I'm sorry, I should have said other materials I was talking about, that wasn't I? So we've got our paints, we've got our brush, um, and you need two pots of water. So one pot of water is for cleaning your brush and the other pot of water is for adding to your paints on your palette. Your palette needs to be white. I've got a white ceramic palette. And the reason for this is your colours won't show up true against another colour. They need to be against white, so they're gonna show up and be the similar colour that they're going to be when they're on your page, white page, once you put them on there. If you haven't got a palette, of course, you can use a white plate or some kind of a white plastic tub. There's all kinds of food containers we get that can be handy for mixing your paints in. When I mixed my paints, I kept them quite thick. I didn't add a lot of water because I wanted the colours to be nice and bright. You could also make your colours brighter by adding more and more layers, however you want to do it. But I wanted them nice and bright, so I didn't add a lot of water to begin with. The only thing with this is it does mean your paint is going to dry more quickly. So some of the spaces here are larger than others. There's that big large leaf at the top. And you might find that your paint is drying a little bit too quickly as you're putting it on there. So you might want to work uh, more, more quickly when you're doing a larger area like that. And be mindful that it might be just drying out on the edge there. So I tackle this by doing one colour at a time, as you can see. And the thing about this is you're not wasting paint, you sort of mix one colour up at a time and then you may use that colour later on adding it into something else because they're all quite harmonious colours together. We've got lots of oranges, browns, greens um, and yellows. So make one colour up at a time and work across the page so that that colour is, is you know, evenly spread out across the page so that it's making a harmonious composition in the final painting. The other thing is keep moving your paper around so that your arm or your hand isn't leaning on the work that you've already done. And don't have the same colour next to each other. So think about this as you're going along where you're positioning your colours that um, you're not wanting the same colour next to each other. You're wanting always a different colour sat there. And by working like this, it gives things chance to dry out before you put another colour next to them. So keep moving around your paper so that you're not putting too a wet colour next to one that hasn't had chance to dry out. So I did use other colours other than the oranges and the greens and the browns which are very you know what we think of as being autumn. We've got the lovely little cyclamen there. I have some of these in my garden, those down in the bottom right hand corner there and they're a lovely pale pinky mauve colour um, and they're absolutely beautiful to be flowering at this time of year in the bottom of the, the wood and the, the flowers come first before the leaf and they're just so pretty in amongst the autumn leaves that have fallen down. So that's a bit of an introduction of another colour into it, um, but still an autumn colour because they're an autumn flower and, that, and they're there. So lovely to introduce that little bit of colour there. And of course with the blackberries as well, there's quite a bit of pink and red in those. So we've got all sorts of colours going across the page there. So it's just making a very cheerful picture really. So pop some music on and enjoy doing this part of this project because it really is very relaxing. As I said earlier, I do really think this is quite a therapeutic thing to do. As you continue painting and filling in all these spaces that you've created with the pen, you're going to be making some decisions about whether you're just going to leave one colour, um, a one flat colour in each of those spaces, or if you're going to build on those a little bit. I decided to build on them a bit and put some more detail in, especially with that conquer that you'll recall earlier I said was um, a bit of a focal point. I did overpaint it a little bit and I did lift some of the paint out and made some mistakes with that. But like I say, you're going to make these decisions whether you want it a um, full blocks of colour or whether you want to add some layers for some more depth of colour 
um, etc so you'll see i've done that on the rose hips as well just to add a little bit more interest and with the conquer i did leave a highlight of white paper so we're not although the, the whole idea with this project was that we were going to fill that paper i did leave that tiny little bit so if you do leave highlights make sure that they're just you know small and one or two don't overdo your highlights with something like this and it'll end up looking a little bit too fussy so I carried on adding various colours, making various mixes, making different greens and different browns and oranges, etc. So just work with what you've got, the colours that you've got. Um, you could perhaps have a practice first with some of your greens. Try mixing the yellows that you have with the blues that you have in different amounts and quantities and using different ones together. Um, and you can make notes of if you find a green that you really like with some of the, your colours that you've got that you've mixed up. Um, make a note of that for next time then you can come back and use that green again in another painting so the paints that I use are Windsor and Newton artist quality so whilst we're chatting I thought I would tell you a little bit about the difference between the artist quality paints and the student quality paints and it might you know make you decide which ones you perhaps want to buy I've always worked with the artist quality ones they're slightly more expensive but the difference is the binder so and the amount of pigment that there is so with the artist quality in the Windsor and Newton and then you've got the student quality ones they're the same colors so they're the same pigment so you don't need to worry about that um, if they're called the same color that's the color that they are but there is less pigment so that means that you're going to have to lift a lot more off the palette so although it seems less expensive to buy the student quality one you're going to be using more so over time it isn't any less expensive because you need more paint to make the same depth of color so basically the binder is what binds the uh, color pigments together whether whether that's in a liquid in a tube or whether it's in the pans that you buy I use the little pans um, and the thing that binds them together which is different depending on the manufacturer and on the paint something like Sennelier actually uses honey which gives this lovely glaze which is a beautiful binder do you remember the ones we had as children the little round ones um, those were, were bound with chalk and that would leave a chalky film on your painting so you didn't get the vibrancy um, and they were a little bit disappointing. So the colours are bound together to made made into these little pans. Now with the student quality ones, there's a lot more binder and a lot less paint. With the artist quality ones, there's more paint um, and less binder. So you've got that intensity of colour. So I would advise working with the artist quality ones if you can afford them. Um, don't worry if you can't it just makes life a little bit more tricky you've got to you know have a good brush have a good synthetic brush to lift plenty of color off your palette off the colors there okay so that's a little bit about what I do so I use um, I've had the same set for years I use Windsor and Newton and I do have a Sennelier set as well um, which like I say uses the honey binder and I take that out with me that's a little travel set and those have got a really vibrant colors in them so I like those as well. So I have bought some extra ones um, to use alongside my Windsor and Newton paints. So just a little bit about my paints really there. Um, and as far as brushes go, like I said earlier, I do um, use different brands of brushes because I tend to get them in sales and things like that. But you can get some really good uh, synthetic brushes. You don't have to use um, the sable ones, which are obviously more expensive. The sable ones I have were all bought in sales. Okay, so that's uh, about it for that. You'll see I've added some blue um, just to make us feel like we've got a little bit of sky coming through there. You would don't have to do that. You could make the whole thing just those autumn colours. You could add extra greens and browns behind as if we've got more um, dense foliage behind there, some more leaves, um, fallen leaves, etc. Rather, rather than putting that blue in. But I thought the blue just freshens it all up, gives us a glimpse of sky coming through the wood there. Okay, so uh, I will go on. Um, and the, uh, this, uh, I've broken this down into a few pieces because, I've, like I said earlier, I've speeded it up, it up by five, but it takes a, a long time, which makes it really relaxing thing to do. So you're not thinking about anything else. You're not worrying about anything else whilst you're doing it. So I think the next one will be the last one.
In total, this took me well over an hour and a half of non-stop painting without any breaks to completely fill the page here. And it's not a, a very large painting. So, you know, you can see how long it's going to take you. And you might want to do this over several days. It's a very nice project just to have on the side. If you've got the space just to leave things out, um, you could leave this out and just whenever you've got 10 minutes to spare or five minutes to spare, just get one colour out and do one section and then when you come to it the next day um, that's obviously going to be nice and dry and the colours aren't going to run into each other so it's a good project just to have on the side if you've not got lots of time to sit for an hour or two at a time to just have over several days so you could do this uh, at any time of year it doesn't have to be autumn you could do a lovely spring one with daffodils and tulips um, I think that I like nature and I think the natural ones are nice using wildflowers or even just garden flowers. So think about making a harmonious design. So either choose wild or, you know, garden, not perhaps mixing the two. Um, so, yeah, like I said, daffodils in the springtime and then you've got lots of abundance in summer with some lovely um, garden flowers, maybe. And it doesn't have to be just flowers. You could do something like a ski seascape and you could do a complete page of shells. And if you just think of all the different shapes, you could get in some shells. So you, if you're someone who lives near a beach, you could go and have a little walk and collect lots of shell shells and bits of pebbles and things off the beach and look at all the glorious colours you'll find in those when you really look so many different colours. Uh, it might be a bit more subtle than this one and very, very different in style, you know, of the subject, but uh, equally as satisfying. So you could actually have a few on the go, which would be very nice. Um, and don't forget when you've finished to take a photograph of your finished work. And you might want to use this for something. You might want to frame it as an artwork in itself. You could even make it into a jigsaw. There's all sorts of um, things online where you can make your works into jigsaws or you can have your works printed on things, cards, etc. Like I mentioned earlier, fabrics and things like that would be a lovely design for something like that. You might even want to be really technical and do a repeat pattern. That's not something I've had the patience to do here, but it's something you might want to look at if you're a more patient person than I am. So there's all sorts of applications for this kind of thing. A bit of a mixture between realistic, illustrative and abstract with those shapes in the background um, and giving us lots of colour and that time to just fill in all these things and really relax. That was one of my main reasons for doing this was because when I do it, I find it very relaxing. You really switch off from all your problems because you're concentrating so much on getting those colours within the lines um, and so you're not thinking about any everyday kind of worries. So I, that's one of the things I wanted. To, I know I've repeated that, but I really wanted to get that across to you how therapeutic that this kind of thing is, because you do that initial drawing, you put all that effort in um, and then you've got that image if you've taken a photograph of it and you can colour it in all different colours. Um, and I think, you know, that's why these adult colouring books have been so popular over the last few years, because it's so relaxing to fill those in. So that's actually another thing you could do. You could make an adult colouring book. Um, you could do all the seasons. You could, you know, start in spring and go through all the way to winter um, doing different things. And you could, like I say, some ski seascapes. You could think about different areas of the countryside, woodland uh, compared to meadowland. There's no end of ideas that you could do with these kind of designs. OK, so I'll have a little chat with, again now we've finished. Um, and yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that because I've really enjoyed doing it for you. So take your time with it and enjoy it. So that concludes this course. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed doing it as well. Um, I do apologise for it being a little bit on the lengthy side with the chatter because it was a very lengthy process which made it that relaxing process that we talked about. So I look forward to seeing your work and I'm hoping that I'll get to see a few different styles and subjects, um, a bit of a variation on the theme there. The main thing being that you stick to it being a very illustrative style, um, some nice defined lines, that enclosed space, a little bit of realism with your shape 
combined with the abstract background where we just put those lines in to make some enclosed spaces that we can fill in with that lovely colour. You might want to send me some that are in completely different colourways. So instead of it being nice and bright, it might be a little bit more subtle, perhaps depending on your mood and what you want to do that day with different subject matters. So it's something that's got limitless possibilities to do different things in this style and you could perhaps make up a colouring book or something, who knows? And I'd be, love to hear about that if you go on and do anything like that. So do let me know as always if there's anything you want to ask um, and I look forward to seeing that work. And also let me know if there's any future courses that you would like me to do here on Skillshare because I'll be happy to do those for you. And don't forget I've got lots and lots of courses over on YouTube going back several years with lots of watercolour tips as well as other subjects and media. Okay, so I will be back with you again soon with another Skillshare course. In the meantime, enjoy your drawing and painting. Bye bye for now.